Hmm. The Ruckus Society, talk about some of what and why you felt you needed to go from Earth First, Rainforest Action Network, Ruckus Society before we talk about now. Well, the Ruckus Society was really a way to try to help train uh, activists and civil disobedience across the spectrum, you know, not just in Earth First or in the Rainforest Action Network. And we had a network of trainers that work for a lot of these different organizations that use direct action. So we put together a volunteer training staff and then we would come into areas and offer them the types of training that they would need for the, the, the type of actions that we did. Like so, what? Uh, well, we, uh, we came to the WTO early. Uh, we provided training, radios, uh, a lot of the equipment that was used. We helped set up the kitchen. We actually helped set up the first public independent media center there. Um, and uh, we've been in, uh, well, with the old growth uh, issue, we've done the same thing. And, and now we're working more on energy issues. And so talk about um, the kind of uh, organizing that's going on here right now and what it means to have the restraining order against you. What can you do? Yeah, well, those are very different things. I mean, the, the organizing going on in the Coal River is really going on on several levels. One is in the local community itself. And I think that's where some of the most important work is being done, trying to get folks to have the courage to stand up against the coal companies because the, the repercussions can be very serious. Just saying that you support uh, an end to mountaintop removal can, you know, expose you to a lot of threats in those communities. So, you know, people standing together, taking care of each other, watching each other's back, that's kind of the real base of this campaign. And to have a real resistance in the coal country itself, you know, and, and not just to depend on uh, outside help. We've got to fight there first and hardest. Uh, and the second is a statewide coalition here to try to get uh, the state of West Virginia to, uh, in, you know, to enforce the laws. And then the, the rest is nationally. And we have two bills in front of Congress, what now, one the in the bills? Senate and one in the uh, Congress. And, and those would essentially, if, if passed the way they're written right now, would put an end to mountaintop removal. And then we're also in the courts because under existing law, it's illegal to destroy a, a healthy creek. And that's exactly what's going on here. The EPA has looked the other way. So another aspect of this campaign is to get the Obama administration to apply the existing laws here, and we think that would be enough to shut and down. And they them. would be, those laws are? That, well, the Clean Water Act, which protects uh, the aquatic resources and doesn't allow uh, for you to turn a healthy stream and, uh, into an unhealthy one. And that's, that's been the bedrock of our environmental protection laws in this whole country. And the only place it doesn't apply is in Appalachia. If you put in a garbage uh, landfill in any state in this country, you are under EPA guidelines and rules. There is no regulation on the dumping of coal waste, coal slurry, and fly ash, as, as we all know. And if we applied just those laws, then they wouldn't be able to dump the mountains into the creeks. And your assessment of Governor Rockefeller? Of Senator Rockefeller. Well, he's in the camp of the coal company, and he is uh, openly and vigorously supporting mountaintop removal, and so is Senator Byrd. So these guys have always been on the side of coal. Uh, Rockefeller, when he first ran, was against coal, and he had his hat handed to him. And so he never, ever came out against the coal industry again. And it's not so much whether or not they support you. If you don't support them, they support your opponent. They'll put millions of dollars into their campaign, and they will get their friend of coal into that office. And Massey's role in politics? Massey is putting lots of money into the political process. They have helped elect judges and almost every politician in the state of West Virginia, but more importantly, if anyone goes up against them, they will oppose them very vigorously with a lot of money. And President Obama? We think the, the Obama administration wants to end mountaintop removal. Uh, we are pretty optimistic that they're gonna start reviewing all the new permits and that it may be very difficult for them to get new permits. But what we're really concerned about are the existing permits, and we're not sure exactly what they're going to do there. So our job is to put as much pressure on the Obama, Obama administration and EPA now uh, so that they will do their job and enforce the law. 
Well, Mike Rizal, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Um, also mention that on March 15th, eight students from right here, East Tennessee State University, visited the site of the Tennessee Valley Authority, a coal ash disaster in Harriman, Tennessee. Uh, the students were participating what they called Mountain Justice Spring Break 2009. Um, the students wearing dust masks to prevent inhalation of coal fly ash dust stopped at a church while taking photographs and filming the TVA police parked, um, came up to them. Ultimately, they were arrested, and I've been talking with some of them here. Um, but I want to thank you for being yeah, with us, Mike Rozell, um, for talking to us about mountaintop removal. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we'll be joined by Wally Bowen, and we're going to talk about rural broadband here in southern Appalachia. Stay with us. Thank you.